problem is when you've got care teams that are stretched thin, nurses are often the last line of defense. And that's not, you know, nobody designs it that way. <laughs> it happens by default. Nobody intends for that to happen. But when things don't happen, it's it, when there aren't enough, you know, there, there aren't enough people to make sure it all happens. Um, it's the nurses who, um, who, who make sure things don't fall through the cracks. It's the nurses who end up hunting down uh, supplies, fixing equipment, cleaning up spills, emptying the trash, whatever needs to happen. And so clinical leaders are, are struggling, you know, they're, they're looking at where can I, you know, how can I find enough people? How can I find enough experienced uh, clinical staff? And how do we protect patient uh, safety and care quality? And we know that, you know, when, um, when this situation happens, there are a number of problems, right? Um, the first one is clinical safety we, we, or, or care quality. Um, we know that overburden, having overburdened staff leads to poorer outcomes. We see that in the literature, you know, things like central line infections, ventilator associated pneumonia, all those, those types of indicators, you see those um, are, are negatively impacted when you have overburdened staff. Um, second is like, you can't gloss over the fact that it's just frustrating. Nurses want to do a, the work they're trained to do. And that ends up contributing to that, you know, these kinds of turnover and vacancy rates. And then third, it's really costly. <laughs> if you're paying a highly trained, highly skilled clinician um, to chase after a tube, you know, that, that is, those aren't good economics. It's not sustainable.